And we looked at each other. We're all high school All-Americans, and here's this old man telling us how to put our shoes and socks on at 65 years old. What's he talking about? So he reaches down, and he takes his shoes and socks off. And it's the ugliest thing you've ever seen. He's got varicose veins all over the ankles and feet. He's got hammer toes and fungus underneath the nails. And then he shows us how to slide the socks on with nary a wrinkle so we would never get a blister, how to tie our shoes so that our equipment would never fail us. And over the course of the next four years, he told us everything, showed us what it meant to be a, not a basketball player, because he never talked about the game, never talked about winning and losing, but to be a human being always based on that quirky, funny, crazy little pyramid of success and all those human values and personal characteristics that are embodied right here in Compere with Ben and Pam. But John Wooden, who spent 14 years developing this pyramid of success and all those Human attributes like industriousness and enthusiasm and friendship, loyalty, cooperation, intentness, alertness, initiative, and self-control, physical fitness, skill development, commitment to the team, poise, confidence, competitive greatness, flanked by faith and patience, and all the time with one of his favorite mantras, which we go right back to Bunny. It's not how big you are, it's how big you play. It's not how high you jump, it's where you are and when you jump. And it's not a game of size and strength, it's a game of skill, timing and position. So while he's telling us all this nonsense, I'm scratching my head. I'm saying, wait a second, if it's not a game of size and strength, how come Kareem has all the records? How come Shaq has all the money? And how come Wilt has 20,000 girlfriends? And Coach Wooden immediately comes out and he says to us, it's not about material accumulation. It's not about physical gratification. It's about training the mind, learning how to learn, how to think, how to dream, how to visualize, how to build, how to create, how to philosophize. And it's also about subjugating the ego to the goals of the grander big picture so that other people's dreams can come true. And so here we were playing in this surreal world of Johnny Wooden and UCLA basketball, one of the three great teams in the history of basketball that I had the privilege of playing for, the UCLA Bruins, whose records still stand to this very day at the expense of Pat Oliveto. And then the Portland Trailblazers, the youngest team in the history of the NBA to ever win the championship with the oldest starter being 23 years of age. And then my boyhood dream team, the Boston Celtics, with Bill Russell, my favorite player of all time, and Red Auerbach, the Patriot, much like Bunny and Ben. But Red, who smoked those cigars incessantly, it was just so obnoxious. Now, I am adamantly opposed to smoking of all kinds, but when Red would light up that victory cigar, little Billy Walton, with his red hair and freckles and big nose, would jump up and down and pump his fist in the air and say, go Celtics, go, go Celtics, go. And how sad it is that it's been 20 years since the Celtics won their last championship. And now there's generations of young people growing up believing full well and probably truthfully that the Celtics suck. And that's just not acceptable to me. And so while Coach Wooden was incredible at being so positive and being so upbeat, he always talked about the tools to overcome adversity, the tools that Josh and Lily are learning from Ben and Pam, the tools that Ricky Palermo has had to learn far too often in his career. Things like motivation, things like what's going to drive you, what's going to push you. Coach Wooden always told us that you got to create an ideal opponent in your mind to become a good basketball player so that you can work all day endlessly at trying to chase down this incredible opponent, but every time you get close to him, he's so good that you never get to the point where you actually are able to beat him. So that the games, after weeks and months and years of practice, the games become easy. They're just memorized exhibitions of brilliance. Now, I never had to use that tool because I had a real life opponent who was so great that no matter what I did, all the things I ever did in basketball were always about chasing down the greatest player I ever played against. And that was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. All the weight works, all the rehab from the injuries, the operations, racing my bike up and down the coast of California from the Mexican border to up to Oregon, hiking the John Muir Trail through Sequoia and Kings Canyon, Yosemite, Lake Tahoe. The whole time I'm thinking, Jabbar, 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 I'm going to get this guy. And I played my best ball absolutely against Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. But he was so good, he still threw 50 in my face every single time. That guy's left leg belongs in the Smithsonian. After motivation, Coach Wooden talked about the two most important skills that we're ever going to need in life, balance and quickness. 
balance, the ability defined in sports terms of keeping the head directly over the midpoint between the two feet. So when that obstacle pops up in front of you, you're able to go around them. Because your game cannot be based on size and strength. Because if it is, what happens when Shaquille O'Neal walks through that door? Now Shaq, that big double door back there, Shaq can't even fit through that door. That's how big he is. And you think, I'm tall, bunny? Shaquille O'Neal is about here. Yao Ming, I come up to here on Yao Ming. So you better have a game that's based on balance and quickness. Quickness not defined as a physical skill. Quickness, a mental skill, the ability to anticipate, to figure out, to dream, to visualize so that you can be there first because that's who the winner is all the time. And when I see Josh and Lily and I see their bright smiling faces and the dreams of it all coming true, I know full well of the quickness and the anticipation that Larry Bird exhibited. Because Larry Bird, even though he couldn't jump this high, Larry Bird, who in the prime of his career could not run faster than I can walk today, and I'm 53 years of age, have had 32 operations, and now have two fused ankles, but Larry Bird was the quickest guy I ever saw. And to be in that Boston Garden when they were chanting, Larry, 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 MVP, MVP, and had the scoreboard and the foundations of the garden just shaken, that was truly unbelievable. But then Coach Wooden also talked about confidence, the ability to deliver the ability to get it done and to convince not only you and your teammates and your squad, but the opponents that they had no chance whatsoever. And we had that confidence when Pat Olivetto brought the Bonnies into Pauley Pavilion on December 22nd, 1973. But that confidence, while it was easy for me in basketball, was not there in broadcasting. And I can remember early on in my broadcasting career, I was teamed up with Dick Enberg the most flawless and perfect broadcaster that I've ever heard. And Dick Enberg could come into this room tonight without any preparation, without any research, could speak for three and a half weeks and never repeat himself, never stumble, never have any problems whatsoever. And now here I am teamed up with Dick Enberg, who was our local broadcaster at UCLA when I was playing. But now I'm a broadcaster myself. And we're coming on the air for this really big NBA playoff game, and I am just terrified. And the producer is counting down in my ear, 10, 9, 8, 7. And I'm writing everything down. I'm sweating profusely, trying to memorize everything, go over it in my mind. And Dick Enberg's sitting back there, calm as can be, waving to all the pretty ladies like Patty over here and uh, signing autographs for the kids like Josh and Lily, having a glass of wine, knowing that the red light's going to come on. And he's just going to be talking about life and basketball for the next two and a half hours. And he looks over at me. He says, Walton, what is wrong with you? And I said, Dick, I'm terrified. How am I ever going to do this? Now the producer's four, three, two, one, and Dick Embry says, Walton, don't realize, don't worry about a thing. That red light is going to come on in one more second, and there's going to be 35 million people hanging on every word you say. Thanks a lot, Dick. But finally, the sense of perseverance, the sense of what do you do when the ball bounces the other way? It's easy as can be when life is hot. It's easy as can be when I look up here at the head table and see the success and the economy here in Rochester just steaming right along with Bausch and Lomb and Kodak and Xerox and all the different people who have made this community so special. But what happens when you look like this? What happens when you're the most injured player in the history of sports? What do you do when that ball bounces the other way? The ability to turn the negativity and the rejection into something positive and then get that wheel turning over and over again so fast that you can't hold on, you can't let go, and the thunder is going to get you if the lightning doesn't. And so here I was dreaming about it all coming together. And while I talked about John Wooden and how special it was to play for him, don't think for a moment that everything was just rose petals and bright sunny days and beautiful girls there in Los Angeles. No, there was many, many times that I went to the wall, went to the mat with Coach Wooden on every issue, really. Clothes, facial hair, wardrobe, all the different things, the issues of the day, the war in Vietnam. And there was one particular day when Coach Wooden and I really got into it because he had to come and bail me out of jail. 